Today on Listen Up, more than gold. The Winter Olympics are just around the corner, and today we're finding out what it takes to win. Welcome to Listen Up, I'm Lorna Duick. The 21st Winter Olympic Games are coming to Vancouver in a few weeks, and for athletes, the Games represent the culmination of years of hard work and sacrifice, all in pursuit of a dream. A dream that's packed with perseverance, a quality that's often in short supply in our culture of instant gratification. Coming up, we'll hear the story of perseverance from a gold medal winning Olympic alpine skier. But first, more than 250 churches have joined forces in British Columbia leading up to the Olympics. They formed an army of volunteers to serve the 300,000 visitors expected for the Games. And they're calling themselves More Than Gold. Joining us from Surrey, BC is the organization's executive director, Karen Reed, and Kathy Kreiner Phillips, a celebrated Olympian who won gold in the 76 Winter Olympics in Innsbruck, Austria. Thank you both for joining us today. Karen, tell us what is the purpose behind More Than Gold? More Than Gold is a network of the Christian community in the Lower Mainland that's organizing in response to the Olympics. Okay, and you've got a large army of volunteers focusing on three major initiatives. What are those three? Yes, the diversity of uh, the collaboration is amazing. I think unprecedented in my 25 years of involvement in uh, Vancouver. Um, 15 denominations and over 40 partners that are um, organizing together around the areas of service and social justice and witness during the Games. Okay, let's unpack those three areas. Tell us first what service looks like when the church gets in gear on the Olympics. Well, we're theming, we've themed more than gold around radical hospitality. And uh, we understand that as um, our public space has become secularized, that how we reverse that is to uh, intentionally move into the public arena. So we're calling the church to action to deliberately uh, engage together into the public space. And uh, the Olympics is an outdoor extravaganza. Um, so even people, the 300,000 visitors that come, most only attend one or two venues. They come for the larger experience. So we're capitalizing on that and we'll have 20 TransLink stations that we'll move into along with creative and performing arts stages. And uh, we'll be serving coffee and engaging people in spiritual conversations. You've also teamed up with Buying Sex is Not a Sport. Why? Well, we recognize within the diversity of the body of Christ, of course, there's a wide range of views around the Olympics and, uh, and uh, of emphasis. And uh, I believe that it's only as the diversity uh, learn, learns how to work together and bending in love in those differences that we mature. And so there are uh, many that would want to put their emphasis on social initiatives. And uh, so we have partnered with uh, Michelle Miller from Reed, who has just done an excellent job and, and has pulled together a whole working group made up of many denominations. Uh, and the buying sex is not a sport is an outcome of that working group that More Than Gold um, put together. Karen, why don't you just close this segment off for us by concluding, what do you hope the church will learn about life with the Olympics when the end of this is all said and done? Well, I'm hoping that this actually is a catalyst um, for a movement of radical hospitality, which is really the inclusive welcome of Jesus to all. That, uh, and it always included the stranger. And that, so one is that there would be um, a, a continuing, a legacy that would continue of generous, lavish hospitality that would again mark the church. Second is that there would be a, a commitment, a, a growing commitment uh, to collaborate together in the diversity of the body of Christ. This is a, a time where we know that we need to mix our resources and it's going to take the entire diverse uh, church 
um, to become visible and uh, to focus together on kingdom purposes and that we would mature and uh, really link arms in a serious way to serve the common good. And so it's my hope that the Olympics will serve as a catalyst toward that end. Okay, fascinating perspective on the games everyone will be watching. Karen Reed, thank you very much. And Kathy, just stay in the chair there because we're going to hear your story of how as an Olympic gold winner, you uh, found there was another gold that you needed to be going for, a spiritual perspective. That story coming up. By the time the Olympic torch touches down in Whistler, it will have visited 200 communities across Canada. When we return, we'll meet one of those torchbearers who has a very special listen-up connection. We'll meet her in action. <laughs>